So that's it from the SDM as far as setting up SSH. I uh, got a couple extra slides here. This is how you would connect from one Cisco device to another Cisco device. You can read this on your own basically. You specify the SSH command and then what you're going to want to do most of the time is to specify a login name, in this case Packet Lab, and then the IP address. Again, I hate to be a broken record, but refer back to that other series with the CLI or go through when you don't need the username. But basically if you SSH, you know, it's similar to Telnet, SSH and then the IP address. If you get this message, then that means to go ahead and specify a username. And you do that with the hyphen L, then the username, then the IP address. And so once you log in, there are some verification commands. Once again, go check that other uh, video lesson for a whole lot more details. But show SSH is a good one, and it will show you the versions it's running. So in this case, it's running version 2 because we see that no SSH1 is running. It shows you the username and that it's established. Remember they told you that when you configure SSH, it's going to change the, the order of the banners as far as when they're presented. This slide shows you what happens, you know, which, what's changed and what hasn't changed. Basically, when we were looking at that before, it gave you the option to configure a message of the day banner. And you can see here with Telnet, it's, you know, displayed before logging in. So if I go Telnet, you know, 10.1.1.1, I hit that device, it's going to pop up. And as soon as it pops up, it's going to give me this banner saying, you know, don't come into my network because I'll kick your ass or whatever you want to have on there. And this is actually kind of important because a lot of corporations have to have the legalese on there as far as preventing hackers. Supposedly, if you say this is my network, I don't get, grant you access, that would mean you know, anybody that goes past that point is hacking. If it's not there, you know, I suppose it could get you on a technicality, but it's important to note that whereas it's showing the message of the day banner before logging in via Telnet, if you enable SSH, it's going to display after the user's logged in. So if this is where your legal notice is, it's not going to do a whole lot of good because once he's hacked in, it is now showing it there. So you're going to want to probably configure a login banner because that's the only one that's going to be shown before. And you can see this even varies um, based on which version of SSH is being used. So refer to this document whenever you have any questions as far as the banner login. It's good to know about this because this can be something that you just don't see coming and it can kind of bite you in the butt when you're configuring SSH. And here are some of the additional SSH configuration options. The only reason I'm showing them to you is because you don't get access to these from SDM. So if you want to take advantage of some of these additional options, and probably the biggest one is here is specifying a version so that you know they have to use version 2 rather than version 1. Version 2 is more secure. Uh, you could also use authentication retries. Other than the version, a lot of these you probably won't use unless you have a specific reason for using them. But you do need to know that these are not available from the SDM. You would have to log into the router and configure it from the CLI. Or you could go use that config editor and just send the configuration over. Again, that doesn't spell check or any of that. It's not dummy proofs. So just keep in mind that there are additional SSH configuration options that are not available from SDM. Okay, let's wrap this up. SSH is going to offer you basically how I like to refer to it is Telnet with encryption. That's the best way to think of it. A little bit different. It's got some different ports. You do need to specify a username password combination. You can't use a VTY line. It's got a little bit uh, different configuration as far as like setting up the uh, the keys and everything, but it's pretty straightforward as long as you follow this the necessary steps. Enabling SSH with the SDM is easy enough. It's just that you have to jump around quite a bit. There's no wizard for this. There's no one area that you can configure everything from. And there's also an order to the steps that you'll find out, like it'll bark at you. If you try to create the keys before you have the host name, it won't let you do that. There's, you know, which it wouldn't normally on the CLI, but there's a couple of um, strange bits with the SDM. I think that you have to set up the method of login authentication prior to generating the keys, whereas you can get away with doing that in a different order on the CLI. Anyways, it's fairly easy. Uh, you are limited to just pretty much a plain Jane version of SSH. If you want to utilize the additional SSH options like, you know, locking it down to a particular version of SSH, you will have to either get in and configure that from the CLI or send, you know, basically your configuration code from the SDM via the config editor. Anyways, thanks for joining me in the Packet Lab and going over configuring SSH from the SDM. Hope to see in the lab portion of this, we'll go through an example of configuring this and you'll get to see this in action.